Today's video will talk about misconceptions of low temperature charging for lithium iron phosphate solar batteries. I'm going to show you why most people do not need these internal heaters at all. Um, I've talked about this in the past, we've done real world testing, but I think I have new viewers and they haven't seen my older videos. Also, you can add your own internal heaters for cheap, so I'm going to leave a link to that video below as well. Now first off, low temp charging protection is very important. If I were to get these cells at a cold temperature and try to charge them quickly, it will permanently and severely damage them. You could cause a shorted cell or you'll have a massive loss of capacity and you'll never be able to get that capacity back. So a lot of people got excited when these batteries hit the market. They were like, oh, they have internal heaters, that's so cool, it will be able to work in any temperature and that is true but most of my viewers probably do not need these pads instead they should focus on insulating their battery bank these batteries create heat on their own especially when you discharge them and going by the coulombic efficiency of these cells about one to three percent will be lost as heat so if you want these to work in cold environments, you just have to insulate them. If you want really good performance, especially if you're discharging at high C rates when it's very, very cold and you do not have insulation, then these pads work fantastically. I've also had other comments where people think that these cells are still charging when these pads are turned on, and that is not true. The moment these sensors notice that it's below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius, it will turn off charging for the cells and then it will turn on the heater pads. It will not start charging again until the temperature sensors reach the proper temperature. And usually there's a large safety margin, so it's like 45 or 50 degrees Fahrenheit is when they switch back on again. Now we need to talk about how to use these heater pads. If you use the wrong battery charger or the wrong solar charge controller, these will not be triggered. It will go into safety mode, at least the charger sees that, the charger will shut down and then it will not charge so it won't turn on these pads and that's a big issue. So if you use Victron MPPTs, they can wake up lithium batteries when they're in a safety mode. So that's perfect for these internal heater batteries. Another option is any type of vehicle alternator charging system. Those will supply a voltage source and current will flow into these heaters as well. But many battery chargers, especially lead acid battery chargers, will not work with these internal heater battery pads. They will disconnect and then they won't be able to turn on the heater pads so the cells will not elevate in temperature and it will stay in safety mode and that's it. And I've had a lot of comments this morning about this problem. Do not use these batteries if you do not have the appropriate charger. And that doesn't matter how much money you spend. The Kilovolt, the Renogy Smart Battery, all of them work in the same way. For some reason, people thought that this was wired differently or it had different software. Absolutely not. Watch my old videos and watch the video where I tested this one. It has pretty much the same software on when to trigger these pads. Now let's get our mind away from these internal heated packs and talk about a traditional low temp charging protection circuit. There is a temperature sensor. Once it gets too cold, it will disconnect the chargers and the loads typically. Now with those packs, we have built those types of batteries in my solar shed a couple years ago. And I noticed throughout the whole winter, the low temp charging protection was never triggered, even though it was below 32 degrees Fahrenheit outside. And that's because these batteries were in a shed. Um, it is very hard to make the entire shed very cold, especially the thermal mass of these cells. To get the cells and the shed to below 32 degrees Fahrenheit is very, very difficult. People don't realize how difficult it really is. And if you want to see this in action, take a Bluetooth battery that you can watch the temperature in real time and throw that battery outside in the snow. And then watch the temperature go down and see how long it takes. Sometimes the sun will come up before that battery actually reaches that temperature. But it all depends on the case material, how cold it is, and other factors. If you have an all-metal battery like an SOK or a server rack, it will get cold 
colder much faster because the metal case will conduct the heat away from the cells much faster. But if you have a plastic case around your battery, it will hold the heat inside. Now let's say you cannot afford these heater pads, but you live in a very, very cold environment and you do not have an insulated building. What you wanna do is put these batteries inside of an ice chest or some type of insulated box. The heat that this generates will keep the cells warm, even in cold temperatures. And that's why personally, I would never buy these batteries with internal heater pads. Furthermore, if you don't wanna spend the money but you want the heater pads, you can add them yourself. So I also have videos on that. If you're new to this channel, you need to watch my older videos. I have covered pretty much every topic on solar. So please, if you're a beginner and something confuses you or you think something's wrong, please watch my older videos so you can educate yourself and understand how these systems work. Now, when we tear apart these internally heated packs, which these are pretty impressive, I think they're very cool technology and now they're much cheaper. So some people will like these. But if I were to see this temperature sensor near a heater pad, that would be an instant failure and this whole protection system would fail to work in cold temperatures. Also, these are the same heater pads that are used in other more expensive batteries. Some people thought that because it's a budget battery, it doesn't have the same software and build quality as the more expensive ones, and that's not true. But I wanna say this one more time. Most people do not need these internal heater pads. If you focus on insulation, or better yet, if you have an RV and you have a living space and you throw these underneath the couch or in a closet, it will probably never get cold enough to trigger these pads ever. I know that you're thinking, oh, but it's so cold outside, Will. But if you have a heater on the inside and you're a human and you're giving off heat and these create heat and you're holding them in a plastic box, you don't need these heater pads. These only work in very specific situations or applications. Most people do not need them. So anyways, let me know what you guys think about this video and if I missed anything in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.